Hi everyone! This uh, special announcement is about a couple different things. One is if you've ever wanted a personal reading from me, uh, there are a ton of offerings now on my shop which are extremely, in, I mean extremely affordable. I basically it's like 80% off basically for a reading. However, uh, those of you who have had readings from me before and know all the all that I put into them where they're, you know, sometimes they're 30, 35, 40 minutes, that sort of thing. These are not those. These are short, succinct readings, but they are a video recording and they are the best part available within 24 hours. All right. And there's a lot of different readings you can choose from. Uh, they are quick and to the point readings. Uh, so there's that. Okay. Uh, I would suggest also that if you have ever wanted, and I, I don't mean this in a cocky way, but if you have ever wanted a personal reading from me, now would be the time to get it. Um, I'm not phasing out the channel. However, <laughs> I, huh. I'm trying to figure out what to do here because I've put so much into this channel over the years and it's it's really it, it's tanking so a lot of that is because I cannot release as much as I'd like to because again I I think I mentioned this the you know on my last announcement uh, I use my phone and my phone can only record so much during a day at with the recordings like an hour and a half the editing is another I've got it down to about half an hour or so and then processing that is another hour and then uploading it to YouTube can be anywhere from if I get lucky an hour or uh, many times unlucky uh, three hours so I, I can't just keep putting out video 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 uh, so I'm not able to put out like that type of consistency uh, which is why in the past I would say two years you've seen less and less from me all right that's a major uh, part part of it because I used to use my webcam but the quality is just not YouTube uh, friendly anymore. So I, I ditched doing that and used, you know, went for the phone, but that means less content. So anyway, basically I've, I've been struggling with consistent consistency with YouTube because basically I'm not a consistent person. I have a lot of different ideas in my head, a lot of different things I like to express. And when I do that, then my channel tanks. We talked about that already in my last announcement. So, and I mean, really tanks. That last video I put out about relationships, I lost a hundred subscribers. So I'm not, don't mass ex exodus off the channel or anything like that. I'm not like totally tanking it and walking away. I can't basically, uh, there's that too. But also I do enjoy that I have, you know, I mean, albeit small, but it's pretty cool that a lot of you have been with the channel since the beginning. And I mean, that's pretty cool. So I dig that. And so, but when I, when I do release the videos, they will be more, uh, because I want to give you guys video and you know, there's not a whole bunch of stress attached to that of like, oh my gosh, am I going to get views? And am I going to, you know, make my $300 from YouTube this month? <laughs> right. So I'm, I'm, I'm just scratching all that. And I've, I've put enough time and effort into it to, there's a difference between keep going and then recognizing a sinking ship. So I'm recognizing a sinking ship and I'm putting all of my efforts into finishing my book. And the only issue with that is, you know, I need to have some sort of income <laughs> in order to do, to do that. And so that's why I'm having this like ridiculous uh, sale thing that I've come up with. So I'm hoping to just if it works great and I'll keep them there, you know, if it, if it, if it turns out to be a good thing, I'll keep those prices there. I'll keep that sale going there and you know, we'll see how it goes. If it doesn't, then again, I'm really probably going to be phasing things out way slower. So by that, and you've probably already seen evidence of that, like one video a week. Okay. So, um, because then I, I need to focus on, on other types of work so that I can finish my book because that's my main, main love. It always has been. And it's the one thing that I keep putting to the wayside and it's the one thing I should be doing. So that is what's going on. So if you've ever wanted a personal reading with me, go get one. <laughs> I highly suggest getting one fairly soon. And because again, I can't really guarantee that I will even be doing them in the future or, uh, 
any of them, quite frankly, in the future. Uh, however, I would like to. So we'll see how it goes. All right. So that's the big announcement. And uh, ho hopefully you guys understand. I I'm just super transparent. And, you know, I, I've, I've heard things where you shouldn't be and, you know, all those things. But I don't, I don't care. That's <laughs> who I am. <laughs> so and the other thing, you know, about you know, all this stuff, too, is that it's like a lot of things, too, can be like taken down to, well, um, you know, mindset and all those types of things. I want to assure you guys that I do not have a poverty mind conscious, okay, or victim mentality. I do not have like a self-sabotage, self-esteem, this, that. I, none of those things apply here. What applies is that this is just not the right fit for me right now. And it's probably because the universe is screaming at me to finish this damn book. <laughs> all right. So I just want you guys to know that because, you know, I think that's an important thing too, because then that can... Um, distract from faith in someone if it's like, well, they can't even make a living and, you know, that kind of stuff. And I get that. I do. But the thing is, I've, I've just, if, if there is any type of victim mentality here, it's that I have not finished that book. So I'm going to finish the damn book. <laughs> I'm almost there. All right. So that's, that's my announcement and I'll see you guys soon. Enjoy your all signs reading. Okay. Okay, let's get this rolling. Uh, all right, so we're going to start with Aries, any placement Aries, and we are going to look at three areas of life for you, Aries. If you missed the announcement, I highly, highly suggest that you guys check that out. It's just a couple minutes of your time, and it uh, explains a lot. <laughs> and also, there is an offer of 80% off, <laughs> practically 80% off of what I usually charge for readings, and you'll see why in the announcement. Okay, so let's get started and see what's going on for Aries, please. We're going to look at love. We're going to look at, uh, we're going to pull you a career card and we're going to also pull you a spiritual message for now card. Okay, I look for you everywhere. Okay, um, and then we have, I hide behind material things and denial. Hmm, okay, so I look for you everywhere. So someone may be reminded of you a lot. They may, um, they may look to run into you, something along those lines. Hold on one second. Okay, there were some cards turned around in the deck, but I, I know what that's from. It was from a previous reading, so it's not like mysterious cards turned around in the deck kind of thing. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. All right. So let's see what's going on then for Aries with this situation. Or maybe this is you. Maybe you are looking to run into somebody or trying to find like an old flame or something along those lines. It is a hidden. I think it's this is a hidden one. Let me see. Yeah, this is a hidden one. Yeah, Eight of Swords, Six of Wands. Could be a Leo. <laughs> wow, uh, with a Leo card coming out. Yeah, definitely could be a Leo. The Sun, Leo, again. Wow, so you have three Leo cards in a row. Seven of Swords, interesting. So the fingers crossed behind the back and the little foxes on the jacket. So this person's clever. I feel like they've been trying to find out information about you and now they're crossing their fingers that, that it comes through. Yeah, Knight of Cups. I look for you everywhere and it's the hidden truth oracle because in this deck that i pulled from i've mixed um messages of love and the hidden truth oracle together so there's there's an equal amount of both you got a hidden truth card so i feel like this is someone who has 
admired you, but yet, or seen you, or wonders about you, maybe from the past, maybe this is someone that you're just not aware of, uh, maybe at work, or, you know, it could be anything like that, and I feel like they're going to be coming forward now, um, because it's like, they're going to, like, cross their fingers and just hope for the best when they make this romantic offer, or come toward you romantically. Okay. Yeah. Three of cups. Yeah. I feel like they want to invite you somewhere or like, um, date you. This could be soulmate energy with temperance card here as well. Like this could be sort of like ordained in a way or blended to be the perfect match for you right now. I don't know if it means the perfect match forever or anything like that, but the perfect match for you right now, uh, it could be a Sagittarius as well with that, sh that card showing up. Uh, obviously we have a lot of Leo showing, we have Aquarius energy, um, and water sign energy as well, um, possibly even Gemini, but I, I don't think so. Not with the Eight of Swords coming out first. I feel that's more representing like their state, like they're trying to get the confidence to come toward you. So I feel like they will, and I, I feel like they they want to like invite you somewhere or date you or take you out to dinner or something like that. So that's what I am seeing there. Okay, so let's get a career or and or money card for you. So you have stability, beautiful, all right, very nice card showing up for you. So there's definitely the possibility of some stability here for you. Or keep finding ways, like even if you don't have like a ton of money right now, find with the acorns here, it makes me think of like small, putting small little bits away and then it could really grow into like a mighty yoke, right? Um, okay, so let's see what else we have for Aries for their spiritual message. You guys have ground your light, let your soul shine. Beautiful, um, very nice card for you guys. So get grounded, especially being a fire sign, you know, fire, uh, very, um, oh, you know, flickering, right? Uh, a lot of movement to fire. So this would be a good idea for you guys to literally ground yourself, like go sit on the ground, right? And uh, meditate for a few minutes or, um, or even just putting your hands. I do this pretty much every day, putting your hands into the dirt, you know, even just for like a, a minute or so. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's move to Taurus now. Let's see what's going on for Taurus. Okay, Taurus. Let's get started and see what's going on for you guys. Um, absolutely, please check out the announcement at the beginning of this video. It is really, really, especially if you've been around on this channel for a while, or even if you're a new subscriber, it would be good information to know. Um, but please check out the announcement of this video. All right, so let's get started and see what's going on for Taurus. Basically, the announcement is it's a couple different things. There's there's actually something pretty, pretty big in there. But another part of the announcement is that I am um, going to be offering ridiculously cheap readings for a very limited time. And but there's there's a lot more to that announcement. So check that out. OK, so we have self-care soulmate and I wish things could be different. OK, and I can't stop thinking about you. Um, and children are important to this partnership. Intriguing. Okay. So clear your energy field and focus on yourself before acting. Your soulmate loves, accepts, and respects you unconditionally. I wish things could be different. Okay. So let's see what is going on with this situation. So this is a hidden card. These are, they're all from the, the same maker, um, but these are the messages of love. I've mixed the decks all together. So the hidden truth is that this person wishes things could be different. So, um, or you do. So maybe it's like time to like not hide that truth. If it's you, uh, if it's them, we're going to find out right now. Let's see if there's anything that opens up with the situation. Okay. So what's going on with Taurus, please? The Hermit and Nine of Swords. Okay, so possible Virgo on your mind, like really heavily on your mind. The Tower. Oh my gosh. Okay. So 
It's usually what happens after a nine of swords is like a tower type type moment because the, the brain gets too too over saturated with worry. So some kind of breakthrough is coming through for you. Yeah, nine of cups. Wow. Okay. Like this is definitely a time for you. Like if you haven't been very social, the hermit, all right, um, been overthinking a lot of things too much, haven't really got out there, um, then focus on clearing your energy field and and self-love, right? Because it says like a real soulmate, right? A real soulmate will love, expect, um, expect. That's funny. I was looking at respects and accept at the same time. You're, <laughs> hopefully they don't expect. Okay. Your soulmate loves, accepts, and respects you unconditionally. So if you've been single for a while or you've been just having a difficult time with a soulmate and wishing things could be different. Well, wishing does what, right? Not, not much. Um, so <clears throat> I feel like this is more about putting away the, the wishes, the thinking, the overthinking, all that sort of stuff. Let yourself just kind of have this tower moment, breakdown scenario kind of thing with, with stuff and realize that it's like, you are your own genie, magic genie, right? Nine of cups. So it's like, if you want things to be different, I feel it's it's a matter of coming out of this hermit-esque kind of mode, overthinking things and having the epiphany that it's like, yeah, this is what I want. I want this. So instead of wishing things could be different and hiding behind that is what I am seeing here. Um, then we have the moon. Okay, could be a Pisces on your mind also. So far, we have Pisces, Scorpio, Virgo showing up. The Five of Swords. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, there's a real tendency to overthink and worry here. Like, way too much. And you have the Three of Pentacles. So, the Three of Pentacles is more about... Um, working things out with situations. So, and I'm seeing Aquarius now too, as I'm like flipping through the deck. So for some of you, it's an Aquarius, but it's like working through things and trying to get on the same page. Instead of just, like I said, wishing things could be different. It's, it's like, like really, this reminds me of self care also, this nine of cups, because isn't that unusual? Usually the nine of cups is, is in traditional tarot. It's like a little genie that's like, like, like granting you a wish. But in this particular nine of cups, she's, um, it almost reminds me like she's kind of like maybe at the beach, you know, how they have the little outside showers or something like that. I don't know. Um, or her little private cabana or, you know, something like that going on here. So I feel like there's, there's like, a, or like a, a resort or a spa. So, which all of those things would fall into like self care, like focusing on yourself for a while. So it's like healing baths, salt baths, things like that, I feel could be very fantastic for you. Like if you can't afford to go to a like nice spa or something along those lines, you know, hopefully you could afford to get some good rock salt or something at the grocery store, organic, prefer preferably, you know, take a nice salt bath, treat yourself as if you were like at a spa. Instead of all these worries, the worries come at night and then it's like they, they screw with like your, your vision of the way you want things to be different. So instead of entertaining that energy when it comes along and driving you into this, it's like find a way to work things out in a positive way, either with this person, if you have a person, or with the things I talked about before, getting out, meeting new people, that sort of thing, not being a hermit and just wishing things could be different. Okay. So there is that message. Let's get your career money card, that sort of thing. And then we'll get your spirit card, spirit message. Um, oh, what do I do with the career cards? Oh, there they are. I put them back. That's weird. Okay. So what is the message for Taurus in regards to like career Update yourself. Okay. Uh, let's see. So this could be like updating your resume. Um, maybe you can go land something bigger than you thought you could. 
but it does require you to possibly like update yourself or update your, you know, brush off that resume and, and really take a look at it and think, think of ways that you can possibly like spritz it up a little bit more. I've always done that in the past when, you know, when there were times when I would be applying for things and filling, you know, putting, sending out a resume, you know, I never just put like my jobs, right? It's like, I would always like embellish, right? I think everyone does, but not maybe not, you know, so it's like update yourself. Um, make sure that the lingo you are using on your resume isn't from 10 years ago, that they're outdated uh, programs or things like that now. Also, you know, just really like believe more in yourself um, if that is the case. And let's get you one other card. Teacher. Okay. So there's possibly, you have partnership at the bottom of the deck as well. There's possibly something either that you can teach and you can update that and put that on your portfolio, your resume, what have you, or um, learning from someone else because there is partnership here at the bottom of the deck as well, where you can partner up and learn something, um, or I'm sorry, uh, take a class and learn something and then possibly you meet somebody at that class and you guys partner and you do something entrepreneurial, something along those lines. So just updating yourself is going to be um, very beneficial for you. Okay, so let's see, that was, oh no, we got to do your spiritual card, I'm sorry. Let's get that. Okay, last message for Taurus, please. You have living light energy. See the beauty in life. What a, what a nice card, because that makes me think of Venus energy, um, with it, which is your ruler, Taurus, especially with the see the beauty in life. So living light energy. See the beauty in life. Mm, that's nice. So look for the beauty, the living, like vibrance, even of things that may be around you, you know, like a rock or, you know, a stone, something like that. It's like, try to really like, what would it look like if it was vibrating light and, and look at the beauty of like this, this stone that's sitting on your table or, you know, mine in, in this example, but you may have something similar around and like how that must have came into existence or how far it must have traveled to come to you to sit on your table. You know, things like that is what I am, I'm seeing for you. Uh, okay, don't forget to check out the announcement, guys. And thank you. We're on to Gemini. Okay, Gemini. Let's see. Oops, hold on. Let me put these cards away. <clears throat> Gemini, be sure and check out the announcement. Uh, it is... I know I make announcements uh, lately these days a little bit more often than, than I used to, but this one is just really, like kind of the end all be all <laughs> of announcements. <laughs> okay. As far as it pertains to this channel, I don't mean the end all be all of life. <laughs> I, I meant like as it pertains to uh, what's going on here. Uh, and it's, it's not, uh, it's probably not what you think. So I highly suggest checking that out. All right. So what do we have for, okay. So we have children and I love you unconditionally and new love. Okay. Uh, huh. Let's see what this is about. Children are important to this partnership. I love you unconditionally. And this is a hidden card. The hidden truth. Because I mix I mix the oracle cards together. Um, and you got this one, which is the hidden truth. So someone loves you unconditionally, but they may not be like saying it. Hmm, okay. There may be children involved or someone wants to have children. And maybe you're afraid to express that, but the thing is, the hidden truth is they do love you unconditionally. Um, and there, it, this this feels like it's a new situation, though, like a new love coming into your life. All right, so let's see, let's see what's going on for Gemini, please. Tell me about Gemini. Romantic energy for Gemini. <laughs> two kings. We two kings of Orient. <laughs> I guess that's three kings, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. The world. Okay. So which one's over? And then there's possibly a new one coming in.
or you may have two and you're like, mm, I don't think I want either one of them. <laughs> um, you may be like just kind of taking more time to take into consideration like what you really want out of life right now. There may be two. Uh, could be an air sign. And then this can even be like a husband card. But they're in the past. Okay. Oh my God. I, isn't that weird? What did I sing at the beginning of this reading? We three kings. <laughs> oh my God. That's funny. One, two, three. Yeah. You have a new love coming in. Like a new situation. You're ready for a new cycle now. Okay. That's, that's very clear. Oh, hello, Emperor. Oh, I don't, maybe you got a few. Oh my God, Gemini. <laughs> Stop hogging all the, <laughs> all the uh, choices here. <laughs> oh my gosh, Gemini. Uh, okay, we got an Emperor. All right, I feel like this is the same person though. Um, I do. I don't feel like these are two new people. Uh, I feel like this is the same person. Although it could be because you are looking at like options. Okay, so that's, it's possible. Could have a water sign and possibly an Aries. <laughs> the five of wands i'm confused yeah no crap okay um oh my gosh i'm not even kidding i'm not even kidding at what is at the bottom of the deck another king okay so this is a king of wands though blowing this like like fiery kiss um I, eh, I don't know okay so here's the thing I feel like, okay, I feel like, actually, I'm, I'm going to take that back. I think this might be your choice. Okay. I feel like there is kind of two in your past. All right. Or or if it's not two in your past, it could have been like a recent divorce also. Because this is my husband card. King of Swords can represent like divorces, breakups, split ups, things like that. So whatever, whatever it is. Or two options. Maybe there was an earth sign and an air sign. Something along those lines. Now you are ready for a new cycle, the world card, but you're not quite sure, like out of your choices, like, hmm, you know, um, what, what exactly? Because children are important to this partnership. So for some of you, it may be because you want something that like really fits in alignment with your children, or you want to have children. Uh, you are just kind of tossing around options. It's not for everyone. It's a general reading. So if that doesn't apply, you know, you can, you can kind of skip over that. But I feel like there's going to be either one person coming in that's really stepping things up here. All right. As far as new, going from King of Cups to this Emperor energy that sends you a little bit like into confusion or there's going to be two options. Cause that could make sense. Maybe you're doing online dating or something and there's a few options that show up. If you're sort of confused about the two options that show up, it's probably not right for you. And I mean, you know, if it doesn't feel right from the beginning, then it's probably not right. And I know that sounds like a very bold statement to say, because, well, what about giving people a chance or getting to know them? But the bottom line is, if it doesn't feel right right away, it probably never will. <laughs> so uh, that's that's been what I've seen anyway over the years with, uh, with things. And I feel like this King of Wands will be the one that, that sort of changes things for you. No. Okay. Backtrack. I'm sorry. I, okay. I'm going to stick with my initial thought for some reason. I, okay. So that's, Ooh, see, that's the five of wands, the trickiness of this, the confusion of this. Wow. All right. I look at that stuff, like the way I react as like a metaphor for the reading. So I'm going to backtrack again and see, that's what I have a feeling is actually going to happen possibly with this scenario is you're going to be sort of like, eh, I don't know, you know, kind of thing. And then this real charmer is going Going to come in. I feel like the real charmer now is not the one. So that was my initial thought, but then I backtracked and thought, no, I think this is the one that you're not going to be interested in. And this is the good one. But then I backtracked again. So, but now this time it feels confident to say this in your reading. Okay. So I feel like this is a good one that will be coming in. And 
but it's confusing because someone maybe even from the past or that you haven't heard from for a while or or maybe someone who seems really like perfect in all the right ways and like oh my gosh you know i want to have kids i want to get married all these things but really you know there's something a little bit too impulsive about them or a little bit too because i always look at this king of wands as a player and i don't always i don't look at the king of wands as a player like in the rider weight deck i know a lot of people will look at the knight of wands as one or or king of wands at times i personally don't um, I look at them usually more as just enthusiastic. So I feel like this one is a player. I do. I feel like they, maybe they don't mean to be, but I think they they are. And I think they are a little bit of aware that they are that way. So that's, I feel like you have two options coming in. One is sincere. And I feel like that is this one, but they're hiding that information because the emperor is not one to like easily, uh, like they don't wear their feelings on their sleeve. Okay. This one is more of a, they know exactly what to say to you. Um, they know how to charm all that kind of stuff. And they'll probably even say this like within like the first week. Oh my God, I, I love you so much. We, we need to get married. We're going to have kids. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Like there's excitement around this one, but I don't feel it's the right one. Okay. Not necessarily saying this one is either, um, but this one doesn't appear to like, like I feel like this one is genuine. Like they do love you in, unconditionally. That's what I see. All right. Uh, okay. So let's see. Let's get your work and career card. Then we'll get your spiritual message card. Gemini, please. Gemini. Get innovative. Okay. Thinking outside the box. Uh, there we go. Uh, paying attention to your ideas. Only the ones, though, that you truly like, love or feel lit up by. And thinking differently. And you guys are excellent at that. Geminis are really good at that. So definitely time to get innovative about your career or work or what have you all right um and it doesn't mean you have to be like you know you have to go out and become some entrepreneurial person or an inventor or come up you know with something completely you know don't not, we don't need to put that kind of pressure on ourselves right um for some of you maybe you know maybe you do have something that um that is great and just think outside the box of how you can make that work all right um others of you it could just mean in in general in your career it's like if you like work at a corporate job for instance or something like that and you just kind of go in you do the same thing every day or what have you maybe think a little bit outside of the box of like what could set you apart from all of the other employees there um that could that could you know move you know help the company right and move you up at the same time all right that type of thinking as well all right let's get your spiritual message Because bottom line is in a corporate job, it's like they don't care if you're creative and can think outside the box. I mean, they only care if that is the case and it helps the company. So it's like they're not just going to appreciate, oh, wow, Gemini's creative. What a creative solution they came up with. They're only going to appreciate that if it truly like helps them make money or helps them to shortcut something. So it's like that. That's what I mean by by not being afraid to come up with ideas like that that will help the company, but will ultimately help you as well because that, that can move you into a different category away from just being, you know, the same day-to-day -day person. Okay, what is the spiritual message for Gemini, please? Okay, you have light codes, travel away to you, and you have illuminate the shadow, focus on a solution. Okay. So light codes, travel away to you and illuminate the shadow focus on a solution illuminate the shadow hmm. okay because that's when something's created and when something is born um is when the now that's kind of a metaphysical concept but when the shadow is illuminated 
Um, okay, so what? It, what's the message here for you guys? Illuminate the shadow. Focus on a solution. Okay, don't hide from the dark things going on in your life, all right? Or it's like shadow is an interesting word. It's just a shadow. It's a play of light, all right? It's, 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 that's basically what a shadow is. So we tend to put like a very heavy connotation toward that word, especially in this uh, paradigm of what we're looking at in this type of stuff, right? Tarot and things like that, or deep psychology, you know, the shadow self and, and these heavy things, all right? But the, the thing is, nothing can really come into creation without um, a shadow in a sense. I, I it, there's It's more complicated than that. I don't, I don't want to get on some big metaphysical journey here, but... Um, so what I feel is like, oops, I hit the mic, is that this is a message to allow yourself to see clearly the things that need to be seen in your life. All right. So whatever that may be, your love life, your career, your children, uh, you know, any numerous things. Okay. Like don't, don't bury them and try to overcome them just by ignoring them and being positive. It's like, light them up a little bit, see what they are very clearly, because that's what they always say. Like once you kind of put light upon your like fears, right. It's like, like then all of a sudden it's like, Oh, okay. You know, why was I like making this mucky muck out of like this? You know, it's not that it's, it just goes away and it's not a big deal necessarily, but it's like just facing or putting light on those things can really help us to move through them a lot easier. So there's something here about doing some work along those lines. All right, and it does say travel awaits you. Of course, I think these cards are more metaphysical, so they're probably talking more about like, like um, metaphoric kind of astral projection, you know, kind of stuff, right? But it could be literal as well. So travel could await you and focusing on a solution. Okay. Uh, all right, so that was Gemini. We are on to, mm -hmm. what are we on to? We are on to Cancers. Okay, Cancer, let's see what is the messages are for you. We're going to do a love reading first. Then we are going to pull a career work career message for you. And then we are also going to pull a spiritual message for you at this time. Ooh, don't dismiss the red flags here. It came out right away. Okay. Ooh, what's going on with Cancers, please? Tell me about what's going on with Cancers. Romantic love. so attracted to you at the bottom of the deck. Okay, so don't dismiss the red flags here. Oh, I want to tell you how I feel. See, that's the hidden card though. I mix I mix my oracle cards up and this is from the hidden truth oracle where these are just like messages. So this is hidden. So somebody wants to tell you how they feel or maybe this is you, maybe you want to tell someone how you feel. I feel like this is a separate message and then there's this one. Yeah, and then look at that. So Cancers, I feel like you're receiving some sort of like, like red flag here. And like, if this is something like where, cause it's a hidden truth Oracle where you are hiding, like saying, I'm so attracted to you that there may be something here about, um, okay. This could work two ways. So if you're attracted to somebody that there's a bunch of red flags, then there's a reason why you're not telling them. There's a reason why you're hiding and not telling them. Even though you're so attracted to this person, it's like if you've noticed a bunch of red flags, it's like the reason you haven't told them is because you, you're you hiding that for a reason. So if it's not naturally coming out for you to tell this this person that, that's probably why. Because there's probably red flags and it's probably your, your inner self protecting. 
however, there's another uh, line here too, and that is like, don't dismiss the red flags of um, telling someone how you feel so that you are attracted to them. All right, because there's, um, there could be some sort of, if it's a patch up, there could be some sort of mending fences here that could come into balance. Yeah, because then after balance is, I am grateful for the spiritual lesson, and then your true love is already part of your life. Okay, so so in that case, then this could mean, like, maybe there's some, like, something telling you, hey, 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 better stop making this hidden and let them know, oh my gosh, you know what, I'm really attracted to you. So it could be like more like the red flags aren't like red flags about them or their personality. It's red flags about like, mm, okay, you know, better, better step this up for some reason. Like if it's somebody at work or something like that, maybe they're like, uh, you know, not going to be working there next week. Or if it's um, someone that like you want back or something like that, maybe they're about to meet somebody like next week that's going to change the whole direction of things, you know, something along those lines. Now, I don't want to like put pressure on you guys, you know, cause that, that's, that's not, not healthy either. Um, but that, that could be also what it's saying. All right. But don't ever fear. Like if you, you know, like <clears throat> if that, that sounds more like your case, like, yeah, that's true. They could meet somebody next week or I better tell them. Well, only don't do that from a general tarot reading on YouTube. First of all, only do something like that. If you r truly, truly feel like, yeah, you know what? This is it. I bet I should say something. What the hell? You know, I'll, I'll never know. You know, there's something like that. Then then it's like, I feel like you guys could get back together or, you know, whatever the situation may be. But again, it's a general reading on YouTube and you really have to trust your own intuition with this situation. Okay. So there is that message. Okay. Um, now with that said, let's see what your actual tarot reading is. What's going on for cancers, please? I'm sorry. I think I skipped over these. You can expect the apology you want to hear. I know that I crossed the line with you. This is another hidden message. One person is giving too much in this relationship. I don't think that is the case. So all I see is the word balance with this card. And it makes me think of like literally balance. So, I mean, this might, might be true, but I don't think so. I feel like it's like the word balance because like that didn't even register with me and it has in other readings when I've seen this card so I think it's just the word like this will bring balance I'm grateful for the spiritual lesson and your true love is already part of your life now another thing I want to suggest here too is again it's really easy to to run with this and be like oh my gosh you know maybe they were the true love of my life and maybe I should call them or something like that but there's no maybes in love. All right. So like, if you don't feel like, okay, the, the way, here's the way I'm, I'm going to put it out here. All right. If you are supposed to be with someone or you are um, truly supposed to be in this uh, partnership with someone, it will work out. You, it, it will like it will just happen. It will find a way to happen. But if you have to, I always say this and, and it's funny coming from a tarot reader, but it is, I really strongly believe this is true, that if you have to get a tarot reading on a person, it's, it's not your person. It's probably not your person. And I feel like 99.9% .9 assured in saying that because when we are with our person, uh, then we don't need tarot readings. And that's, that's something I would be really careful here with because this, again, we have to think a little bit differently at times. So your true love is already part of your life. Well, of course, your true love is already part of your life. That does not mean it's this person that's on your mind right now. This can mean all kinds of things. This can mean your true love for yourself. Uh, this could mean your true love, you know, in... Um, 
uh, a cosmic sense. This could mean, you know, your true love in uh, your passion, your work, your career, you know, any of the numerous things. So just because it's the card is here and now and balance. Those are the two things I notice. All right. Are those words anything here and now. Okay. So in other words, this too, here and now and balance, look how they're in bold. Those are the words to pay attention to being in the here and now and creating balance for yourself. This is the minutia stuff of life. All right here. So just pay attention to here and now and balance. And if, if something doesn't, doesn't help you stay in the here and now and bring you more presence, then it's like there's not going to be balance. Okay, so let's see what we get here for you Cancers. Tell me about romantic love for Cancers, please. To the Four of Swords and you have the Queen of Wands. All right, so in the recent past, it does look like there's something you have given a lot of thought to here. Okay. Um, yeah, you may have a fire sign around you as well. Some of you, an air sign has really occupied your mind for a while also. There may be, okay, so yeah, that might have been in the past. There may be a newer type of fire sign coming in. I also feel like most of you are in more of an energy of creating new things for yourself as the magician. Like there's a choice. There is, oh, wow, interesting. Oh, I don't know if I want to say that, though, because that's not necessary. That's more of an excuse song. I've always felt that song is an excuse song. Interesting. Okay, so the song just came into my mind. Um, so there's a road. Da, 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 da. If you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with. Do, do. You know, I, I don't know. Cosby still is Nash, right? Um, but it's, it's funny because I, I never... I, First of all, I'm not a huge Crosby, Stills, and Nash fan. I'm a huge, diehard Neil Young fan. Love Neil Young. <laughs> very, very into Neil Young. I like Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Um, I like Crosby, uh, or um, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Stills a lot. Um, no, I'm not, sorry, not him either. Graham Nash. I always forget. I don't know. I saw the documentary and I, I was like, okay, I have new love for, for these guys now. All right, but they've never been one of my favorite bands. Um, I'm not a big harmony type band, right? And, but I can appreciate them. I know they're, they're huge. And the reason I'm going on about this is because I think there's a very profound message here. All right. Because that song was a pretty popular song when it came out in the seventies. And my thing with that song is that I get what it's saying. It's like, if you can't be with the one that you love, love the one you're with. But I also think that that provides like an excuse and it's like, first of all, it's not about being with the one. It's about being, you know, like having love for everyone, basically, right? And, and yourself and all of that. And I get it. They're coming from this realistic place. But I feel like that may have caused a lot of damage, as, you know, as far as like that one particular song, because it probably, it was a huge song. And it made people sort of think like, well, yeah, I guess I can't be with the one I love. So I should just stick with the one that I have and try to love them. And it's like, if you have to try to, to love someone or feel like your true love is over here and you can't have them, well, that's, that's just not a way to go through life. Right. So it's like either just love or, or don't love. All right. It, it's as simple as that. Either you're going to love and you're going to love love <laughs> or you're not and you're going to i don't know settle or whatever you know or be comfortable or you know things like that so that song came to my head so i feel like it's a choice because that's when i said when i that's what got me onto this tangent because i started to say it's a choice and then i heard there is a road and that that gave me to, got me to that song so and think of a road right like a crossroads a choice so I do feel like there's this energy of needing to um, not like settle for something. 
Nine, Knight of Cups. Okay. And the sun. <laughs> see, by making a decision that, that you of what you want to see in your world, two of wands, and then being the magician here of like using what you have to create what you want to see in your world. Well, look at this. Something comes towards you here. Prince of Cups and the sun. And the Empress. Wow. The Empress is very cool in this deck. Um, she's like... Her feet touch the ground. Her her bare feet. But like she's dressed really well, right? And she's the Empress. So she's dressed in luxury, but her she's not afraid to like touch the ground, to ground herself, to be part of the beautiful earth, to send that beacon out of I'm the empress, you know, right? So I do feel like this is attracting someone to come in. Okay, uh, for sure. So you guys have someone like that you, I feel like as you make a choice of what you want to see in your world and realize you have the tools to do it, you attract um, positivity and romance into your life and respect also into your life. Okay. So interesting reading. Okay. Let's get to your, um, we're going to pull you a career card and uh, we are going to also pull you a spiritual card. So what is the... Yeah, unfulfilled. Okay, so the unfulfilled card to me is very akin to the Five of Cups in like tarot. So it's it's like, is the glass half empty or is it half full? So it doesn't matter though. And th this is a deck I, I actually like made myself. So like I know what, what I was thinking when I made this card. So what I was thinking when I made this card was that it doesn't matter like if the glass is half empty or, or half full um, at this point because it's like it's un you're unfulfilled. So whatever it is that you are doing now, it's like it's not fulfilling you. And you can look at the glass half empty or I mean half full. All right. And, you know, try to change your attitude about that. But the thing, the cup isn't flowing over. All right. We want the cup to flow over. So it doesn't matter if it's half full or half empty. It's still half. Right. So it's like there's something that needs to be done in order for it to flow with over. And that that was more of like what I had in mind for that particular card. So let's see. Anything else then? Okay. Jackpot. There you go. Uh, all right. So jackpot is more along the lines of um, realizing this will help you to this. All right. So that's what I see. So many of you are possibly in unfulfilled positions right now uh, with things, but it's again, not looking about like, oh, well, I'll just be more positive or, you know, oh, well, of course, no one would want to be negative and see it as half empty. Right. But so most likely you would need to change to seeing it half full. But again, that that whole scenario, this is the kind of stuff that's designed to program us. All right. Because who wants a half glass either way? Again, right? No. <laughs> you see, you see how this all works, right? All right. So that's what I am seeing there. Okay. And let's get your spiritual card for you. Also, please guys do not forget to check the announcement that I made. Um, I know there's been announcements lately, but it's a pretty biggie. And it also though is, um, if you've ever wanted to have a tarot reading with me, I think you're going to want to check the announcement. <laughs> okay. Uh, and it's, it's a pretty, pretty important one. Okay. So we have sacred, oh, sacred divinity. Hold on to me. Okay. Sacred divinity is your spiritual card. There are two paths ahead. Oh my God. There are two paths ahead. That is crazy. Cause that's exactly what I was saying here. All right. It's like, like there's a road <laughs> yeah. and I, I can't think of the next line from that, but that's okay. Cause that, it's not important. It's, it's that, that, that phrase that got me to that song. So it's like, yeah, definitely it's time to not use things as an excuse and it's time to truly get into the love of 
a situation. It's a time to realize that you can, that you do have the tools and the awareness and the vision to choose what you want to see in your world. And that as you do that, then it's like, yeah, look at this romantic energy that opens up this positivity that opens up. They, you know, it's like this person can now see you as like, oh my God, you know, it's, it's an empress, <laughs> right? And it's like, this is all Venus energy, beauty, all of that. And you have this beacon that you are um, broadcasting here. So that it's like the, the right people will come towards you and, and, and be interested in you is what I'm seeing. So that's, that's what I am seeing here. All right. Um, did I do? Yeah, I did your spiritual card, right? Yeah. Cause it was something about the two. Yeah. There are two paths ahead. Oh my gosh. And it's called sacred divinity, sacred divinity. So treat yourself in a more sacred way. And there's, there's more more to everything than this. All right. And I feel like what I said about this can apply to not just your career. All right. So I, that, that's, um, that, that this is a, this is a lesson to focus on. All right. And there's two paths ahead. So the really cool thing about, um, <laughs> sacred divinity though, is the title of the card, which I got to kind of cover up here. <clears throat> and that's really interesting. I use that song. All right. I, there's more to this too. Okay. So yes, there's two paths ahead, but there's always a space between. So that's like a deeper kind of metaphysical principle, but it also kind of follows in line to like what we were talking about with this. And it's like, so we can look at it half empty. We can look at it half full. That would be two paths. But what's the name of the card? Sacred Divinity. So Sacred Divinity is the name of the card. And then there's this like little in italics, little message tagline that goes with it. But the tagline isn't important. It's the name of the card that is Sacred Divinity. So if you want to pay attention to, you know, if that's not enough, because see, that's the thing. Sacred Divinity should be enough but it's never enough for us. So we want more. So they give us more. All right. Well then, okay. There's two paths ahead then. So if you don't want to take the sacred divinity, then, okay, there's two choices. Well, all right. We'll give you polarity then. So you can choose half full, half empty if you want, or you can choose sacred divinity and jackpot. Okay. Uh, all right. So that is cancer. Don't forget to check out the announcement, please. Very important stuff. Okay. Uh, we are on to Leo. Leo, uh, let's see what the message whoop, is for you. <laughs> okay. Wow. All right. Interference. An external party is intruding on this relationship. This person is unable to give you all you deserve. Intriguing. Okay. So there could be a third party here or someone who's like not really available to fulfill like what you're looking for. So, or it, they may be married or they may be uh, in a relationship or, um, or maybe they're married to their job or something like that. Because it just says an external party. So it doesn't necessarily have to be like a third party situation. Although for many of you, it probably, probably is something along those lines. Um, yeah, it does say this person is unable. Yeah, so it's probably a person. All right. Um, Oh, no, I'm sorry, because it says this person is unable to give you all you deserve. So, yeah, it could be like work or career, like they, maybe they're married to their job or something like that. OK, uh, you guys have a lot of chemistry, though. All right. I do see that. All right. So what is a message for romantic love for Leo? So a lot of times when somebody isn't necessarily great for us, then there is like a, an intrusion. That, that keeps us from entertaining like this scenario. And sometimes that's our higher self looking out for us. And it doesn't feel like that because God, why all this chemistry then, you know, and all that. And I get that. But I mean, if there is something that keeps intruding on the relationship, then it's, it's not the right person to give you all that you deserve. All right. What do we have for Leo, please? Hmm, 
two Scorpio cards in a row in the recent past. Okay, so now I feel as though even if it is a Scorpio that you're you're with or something like that, I feel like these cards are more about the Scorpio energy um, of like ripping open the insides and being really vulnerable about what it is you truly want. So I feel like there's a lot of that going on with you right now. Like, is this is this going to be enough? You know, it, it doesn't feel like it is, you know, that kind of thing. All right, so we've got the Queen of Pentacles. You know, somebody could definitely be like married here for sure. Um, we have the Six of Wands, which is a Leo card. Wow, yeah, we have the King of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. Interesting. And the Devil card. Wow, hold on, I gotta cover this up. Okay. Devil card. Three of Swords. Oof. All right. And the Two of Cups. Wow. Okay. And then the King of Pentacles. So there is a King and Queen of Pentacles here. Okay. So. Some of you, you're kind of viewing somebody as like, that's going to be like, like they're going to become your husband instead. I, I feel like there could be some disappointments in that arena. All right. Um, I just, I feel like that may not work out. I think that you guys enjoy each other in, in the moment and all of that. And maybe even he treats you well or, or she treats you well, whichever, you know, uh, fill in the blank there. Um, but it it does feel like they're not going to be able to like you're hoping for marriage and i feel like they're not going to be able to provide that uh they're not going to be able to pro provide this being this um traditional situation with you is what i am seeing so i feel like you have a good chemistry i feel like you have potential with this person um, but I don't feel like there, if it's marriage and stability that you are looking for, I don't feel like this person is there. All right. That doesn't mean they'll never be, but I, I, I'm kind of sensing that they're not probably going to be that. And especially if they're married, like if they're married, I, I don't, I don't, I think the answer is no. I don't feel like they're ever going to, you're going to get to that place where they leave and you guys are together, you know, kind of thing. All right. I feel like that, that is, um, not, um, like you may be like seeing it as this and sort of seeing it like, well, we're going to go do this and we're going to go do that. And, and we're going to travel together and we're going to be in love and all these things. But again, I feel like they're not going to make the proper sacrifice that you um, are expecting. So it's either probably be very flexible with the situation and then just experience it for what it is, but without the expectations on it. Or if you do have those expectations and that's, you know, that's your sort of deal breaker kind of thing, then this may not be the right situation for you. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to pull you guys one advice card. Actually, I haven't done that for any of the other readings, but it feels like it requires an advice card for, okay. So you have, yeah, door to romance. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And I do see that. But there's somebody to leave behind or to let go of or someone's just unavailable to give you what you want. All right. So open the door to romantic situations where someone can give you what you want. That's that's basically what I'm seeing here. Um, and I feel like you're starting to see this in, in the recent past that it's like you you need more from so you're unpeeling a lot of layers within yourself and you have a lot of confidence in yourself right now. But it's this one situation here that I feel is kind of keeping you from this ultimate <laughs> um, romance here. Okay. Uh, let's see. So we are going to get you a wor work and career card right now and then a spiritual card. Leos, do not forget to check out my announcement at the very beginning. It's, um, it's an important one. I, I know I've had some announcements lately, but this one's like pretty pretty super important 
Okay, especially if you've been around on the channel for a long time. Okay, so tell me about Leos, please. All right, so you have passive income. All right, and then you have combined forces. Okay, so I feel like, yeah, there's going to be like more of a challenging experience coming in for you, I feel, where it's like... I don't know, you may have some kind of idea for passive income, but it's going to require you to like work with others or work with someone else in order to see it come into fruition in some way. So I feel like if, like right now, you may already have this, maybe it is your passive income, but by combining forces, wow, right? Then it could become much, much more, all right? It could even become your, your whole gig or, you know, something like that. So that's what I feel like the message is. So like either you have an idea and it's time to combine forces to get it off the ground, or if you've already been doing something, but it's not really like enough to like quit your day job or something like that, there may be something here about combining with someone else that could bring it to that level, that next level that you're looking for, okay? Uh, okay, and what is Leo's spiritual card, please? Spiritual message. Secret temptation and being led astray. Interesting. Okay. Again, I feel like this is this. Oh my God, Seven of Swords, hell no. Yeah, something's a heads up here, I, Leo's. I can't tell you exactly what it is. I don't, you know, it's a general reading. It's It could be all kinds of different things. But absolutely, with Seven of Swords, and it's called Many Tongues in this deck. So that means uh, spinning a lot of tails, right? Um, this person is unable to give you all you deserve. And it's like being led astray by a situation. All right, so I would be very careful. For some of you, it could even be a business partner. Others of you, it's it's like a relationship. All right, for sure. So heads up, I feel like there's there's a definite heads up here to your reading when it comes to romance, possibly even when it comes to work and partnerships, things that may come out of the blue, things like that. A mm, little heads up there. Um, yeah, just there, there's a whole lot of heads up here in in a lot of ways so i don't i don't say that to like frighten you or to scare you or to put you on edge or make you paranoid or any of those things none of those will serve well and in fact bring things all right so you don't want to get into that mode all right so ditch the paranoia and instead um be hyper vigilant vigilant in upping your energy level of self-care of love, compassion for yourself, of building your aura, all right, uh, when you are dealing with others or dealing with things, um, any types of newer things that come along or, or relationship talks that come along, things like that, do not give immediate answers. Sit with it, journal about it if you need to, um, at, you know, pray a deeply, sincerely for a genuine answer for, for that to come in the morning, something like that. Take your time with things. That's the way to deal with this stuff, not to get paranoid or be like, oh, I know who that is. And, you know, that son of a bit, you know, it, it, don't get in that mode. All right. Because then that, that exasperates the energy. All right. So the best thing to do is take your time with things, take your time with things, um, hear what's really being said. Okay, and if it feels like a temptation, then it's probably a temptation. It's probably the devil card in disguise. Okay, so that's that's the advice I would give for that. Okay, uh, let's see. We're on to Virgo. Okay, Virgo, let's see what the message is for you. We are first going to take a look at love messages for you. Then we are going to pull career uh, information and one spirit 
retard also. Uh, I, don't, I don't know about that. Okay, maybe. Let's see. Okay. Let's see what we got here. I am not available and find time to laugh, goof off, and enjoy each other. Okay, so I am going to choose the, the card that, I, that was kind of sticking out, and I was like, eh, I don't know, maybe I am going to choose it because I do feel it does match. Okay, so there's someone in your energy possibly that, you know, is interesting, but they're really not available. Um, and they may have come closer than anyone or they may feel that way about you like well you came closer than anyone but I'm gonna stay where I'm gonna stay okay so right now I feel like it's either just enjoy the situation for what it is and if you can it's very similar to Leo's reading in a way um, or it's like just find time to laugh this off well you can't laugh it off I get that As some of you it may be more of a, a tearful thing of course I, I get that but like if the tears lift at some point it's like then find some time to just you know enjoy this for what it is and but know that like no this person is not available for you um at this time okay oh I got the wrong cards let me get my uh, tarot cards okay so let's see what other messages are here all right, for this person, maybe they're married. Maybe they um, they could be married to their work, married to someone else, or they could be in a relationship with someone else. But um, really, all they are available for is to like ha you know be somebody in your life to have like kind of a distraction or like some fun with or something like that. Okay, uh, let's see. All right, so what's going on with Virgo in romantic love? Okay, hold on. I got to cover this card. One second. Sorry about that. Okay, it's the nine of wands. Okay, showing up. With the four of wands. Yeah, I feel like there's like this waiting for um, this person, but they're just probably not going to be what you want in the long run. Okay. So you're starting to see that with the princess of swords. Maybe you did a little digging or you... Um, this could even be like a professor student situation for some of you. That, that's very bizarre. I don't know why I said that, but I don't know. That came out too. Uh, all right, so what else? Queen of Cups. Yeah, I feel like like holding up that cup, the Queen of Cups in this particular deck, she's not the mopey queen, you know, sitting there gazing into, you know, the, like, in, in, melancho in melancholy energy or anything. She's standing up, and she always kind of reminds me of, like, she's toasting the situation, like, okay, it is what it is, you know, kind of thing. So I feel like that is what is needed here. You found out some information in this current energy or are, are about to. And I feel like that's kind of all you can do with it. Like just toast it and okay, you know, it is what it is kind of deal. Yeah, 10 of cups in reverse, wow. And I don't have reversals going on in this deck at all. So that's intriguing because the 10 of cups would be in the upright would mean in the near future, you guys would come together. You, could, you would have happiness, um, emotional fulfillment, but it's in the reverse. So it's showing like in eh, this, probably is not where where it's going and then you have the empress wow okay so it's time for you to shine the beacon towards other things i feel like realize your self-value and self-worth in this scenario and like like be available for other things that that um where someone will be available for you okay yeah and then you have the five of wands so the five of wands can be this is a tricky situation for you it can feel very confusing and all of that i did notice a queen of swords at the bottom of the deck yeah and see this person like they blow kisses to you and all that but it just it keeps you in the five of cups um, because it does feel like it's a third party situation. Again, it's like, it doesn't have to be like necessarily, um, like that this person's married or that they're this or that they're that possibly, but it could even have something to do with their, like their job. Like they're not available, you know, to date you. Maybe you guys work together and it's against policy. Something like that is, is more along the lines of what I'm getting. Um, or they're just not the kind of person to settle down. All right. So that's what I am seeing there for you guys. Okay. So 
it feels like a situation to to um, move away from that's just going to cause like a lot of confusion and isn't going to turn itself into like the 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 and I don't mean to be cold and saying this but it's like it's not it doesn't feel like it's going to turn itself into that ha happy ever after that you deserve all right that's that's what I'm seeing um okay so let's see what your work and career message is then we'll move to your spiritual advice card okay yeah feeling unappreciated interesting okay so and then you have negotiate here at the bottom of the deck so the feeling unappreciated card, I made this like deck myself a long time ago. So the, what I had in mind with this is that it's a sheep, all right, but with a unicorn horn. So it's like you are sort of like herded in with a sheep, but you're not a sheep. You're a unicorn, all right? So it's like there's color to you. There's something different, something unique about you. So it's whatever situation is going on in your work and career, you may be feeling like just a sheep or, you know, a cattle and, you know, or something like that in a pen. And it's like, that's because that's not for you. You're a unicorn. All right. So I feel like there's something here to either negotiate for more money and more value and more worth. Okay. Because of the Empress showing up here or um, work on some sort of, um, getting yourself into just a partnership possibly, but with like the right situation. <laughs> okay. Not with unavailable people or anything like that. Okay. Um, that is what I'm seeing. So also part of this too is mindset because it's like, um, there's a lot of unicorns that are in the pen and it's, that's one thing to realize too. It's sometimes we feel like we really are like very unique or very this or very that. And yes, uh, I don't want to take that away from anyone. Of course, you know, we all are very unique in, in all of that. Um, however, it's like sometimes though we can get so like dark, the card, I made it black for a reason um, because we need to create new things. Okay. And so I feel like with the negotiate, there's some sort of compromise to make with either someone or yourself of like, okay, yes, you are unique, but sometimes it, it like, there's a lot of unique people out there that still have to kind of put on the, the sheep wool, right? The bah, you know, and, and, and stay in line and stay in the pen and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I'm not saying that we should settle for that by any stretch of the means, but it's more of then, okay, if you are a true unicorn, then what are you going to create against like that? That's what the darkness means to me because it, it's like to create something. Okay. And not, I, I don't know how to, that's a metaphysical concept. So I don't mean like create something dark. That's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying like, it takes like a kind of like a, um, avoid if you will to shine light on to create something so it's there's something here to realize within yourself and negotiate in a way how you can get to your unicorn status okay that's what i'm seeing um all right so what else do we have for um let's get your spiritual card down virgo virgos i highly highly suggest taking a look at my announcement uh, and it, it won't take too long. And especially if you've been on the channel for a while, it's a very, 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 very important announcement. Okay. So you guys have channel your knowledge. Okay. Oh, wow. And how interesting is that? It says critical judgment, which um, a lot of times Virgo is associated with having that quality to be able to like critically um, not in, see, we put like a negative connotation to that word right away, right? Critical, but there is a purpose for criticize, you know, criticism, critical thinking, you know, that type of thing, constructive, right? So this, that is one of the skill sets uh, assigned, you know, in a stereotypical way, but it is assigned to Virgo because your card is the hermit and it takes critical thinking to become a hermit. And then that builds into wisdom and so forth. So channel your knowledge. So I think like right now, it's a time for you to really understand that you do have a lot of wisdom, a lot of knowledge that is coming your way right now. And it's time to like channel that into something that 
um, that you will feel appreciated in or a relationship where you're not going to be confused about um, into a relationship that someone is available, all right? And use your high discernment in situations. That's what I feel the message is about for you, okay? Uh, all right, so that is Virgo. A Libra, please. What is the message for Libra? Libras, we are going to look at a romantic message for you first. Then we are going to look at a work career message for you. And then we are going to um, tidy all that up with a spiritual card at the end of advice. All right, what do we have for Libra in the romantic love message department, please, for Libras? Oh, can I have that word on there? I don't know. Hold on, let me cover this up a little bit. Um, that's funny. I, I, I chose the, the cage. Interesting. Okay, so the card says strictly, and then it says some other three letters in front of UAL. Okay, I think I have to cover it up though. So I think you can understand what the card says. So this connection is passionate, but not enduring. Okay, and it's interesting. I, I chose a card real quick to just picked it up to cover up that word. And the card I picked is the Ten of Wands, but, but it says literally like the cage. So it's like a prison in a sense, or a cage that um, this relationship. So this connection is passionate, but not enduring. Okay, and let's see, what else do we have? Anything else for Libra? Okay, take time to get to know each other. Interesting. And then old wounds and childhood issues need revisiting. And it's time for me to heal now. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's see what we get with the tarot. Take time to get to know each other. Old wounds and childhood issues need revisiting. And it is time for me to heal now. Okay. Okay, what do we have for Libra, please? What is the message for Libras? Romantic message for Libras. You have temperance in the recent past. Okay, Sagittarius energy. Uh, yeah, a lot of fire energy showing up here in the recent past. Okay, with the Princess of Wands and temperance. So you may have heard from like an old soulmate or something like that, or a Sagittarius recently, or been thinking about reaching out to someone in the recent past. It could be that as well. Let's see what else we get. Okay, is that one? Yeah, let me cover that up a little bit. Um, so we have the star card. Aquarius energy or really healing with a situation right now. The seven of pentacles. Yeah, this, this makes me think of like going slow, um, get to know each other before, because it may be like someone that you've just met or something like that also, or again, somebody that that's coming back around either or um, it is a general reading where it's like, there's this passion because there's this fire energy, right? Um, but it's passionate, but not enduring. So take time to get to know each other. Um, it, it is time for you to heal with the star card here. Put, put the work and effort into healing. And it's interesting because it even says old wounds and childhood issues need revisiting. And look at the, it almost looks like doll heads here. Isn't that intriguing? So, and look, and she's holding her belly. Um, like, like that's, that's interesting because I've never seen that in a seven, seven of pentacles before. So that could even be like the inner child or um, something along those lines. Okay. You have the Hierophant showing up. Okay, very nice. And the Ten of Pentacles. And the Tower. Wow. Okay. And the Sun. Oh my gosh, beautiful. Okay, so yeah, I feel like this is like a metamorphosis transition. 
Um, there may be like a marriage up ahead for you or something along those lines, but it's like, I feel like it's not necessarily this situation. That's the thing. So, cause it's passionate, but not enduring. So there is something here where I feel like you are revisiting some things. You are healing. You're in the process of taking time to heal for yourself right now. Um, you're going slow with things and I feel like that's, that's a good move. I feel like you guys are, are going to actually be moving in toward, to like a very long-term marriage in some way. Um, or maybe it's your current message or current message. Interesting. Your current marriage. All right. That could be as well. It's like, maybe it's time to really get to know each other again, you know, and maybe what brought you together was like passion or physicality but you guys kind of skipped over really getting to know each other. So that could be it too. And this then could be healed, all right, in that sense. And there, you know, as long as you are willing to kind of bust out of this cage, right, and look at these things and see, it could even be something from your childhood psychology that attracted you to this person to begin with, you know, something like that. So I feel like with the tower and the sun, like there's a, there's a big breakthrough for you, a big epiphany um, that will ultimately bring you to more happiness and joy and more of a long-term like stability with someone is what I am seeing here too. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's see what we have for you in um, work and career cards. Where are those? Okay. Let's see. And then we are going to pull a spiritual card message for you as well. Libras, do not forget to check out the announcement at the very beginning. Uh, if you've skipped it and just went to your timestamp, please check out the announcement, especially if you've been on the channel for a while. It's a pretty important one. And um, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, okay, so we have prosperity. Wow, beautiful. So uh, yeah, I would say um, you also have creative work, right? Coming right after that. Okay, so prosperity and creative work are showing up for you. So prosperity is a card of lasting prosperity. For some of you too, I mean, this could absolutely be like returning to um, like a, what uh, what's the word I want to call it? Um, like a certificate, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like a degree, like at university. Uh, for some reason, I'm feeling like that message is important for someone out there. Like someone just has like a little bit more left to get like a degree or uh, something along those lines. And that is kind of hitting for me in this reading for you as well. Okay. Um, so it could even be like work and career for you or something along those lines. I see marriage here with the Ten of Pentacles and Hierophant, but you know, it could be like a marriage to like a different career or something along those lines, especially with creative work showing up. Uh, I feel like you have a lot of, you like your true love because it's green, um, which it, to me indicates like the heart chakra and growth, okay, is with, with creative work. And I feel like that is where your true like prosperity lies in a way. It's also probably because a lot of healing can be done through creativity. So maybe like take like a one of those classes that, you know, there's a lot of like art classes and things where you don't have to be good at art necessarily, but like their their art therapy or anything that's like involves creativity for you. Okay. Uh, let's see. And let's get your spiritual message for you as well. So I, I want to uh, make this clear though, too, that prosperity is the first card that came out. This card was just like a kind of a bonus card that was after it. So keep that in mind too. So this doesn't necessarily mean that like you have to be in the creative line of work in order to be prosperous. Okay. Cause the prosperity card came out first. So it's like, I, I feel like you, some of you are already prosperous. Great. If that's the case, then take some time to do some creative work for yourself just to bring out your own inner self. For others of you, it could mean like just keep like putting in the work towards your prosperity and it's like find ways to add creative touches to your work. Okay. It doesn't have to mean that you have to ditch your job and go become an artist or something like that. All right. Um, for some of you, maybe, you know, it, it just depends on, on how you look at things. Okay. So what do we have for your spiritual advice? Okay. So we have, bur wow. Well, <laughs> Okay, I mean, it does say birth of creation and potential growth, and you do have creative work here. So perhaps there is something cre creative for you to attend to or move towards, okay, as far as in your work and career. And that could 
also just lead you to a lot of like breakthroughs and happiness as well. Okay. So birth of creation, potential growth, it says underneath. Very nice reading for you, Libras. Okay. Don't forget to check out the announcement. Uh, okay. Okay, Scorpio, let's get into your reading. What we are doing is I'm going to give you love messages first. So romantic love message. And then we will pull a card or two for career. And then we will wind it all up with spiritual advice or a spiritual card. All right, what do we have for Scorpio, please? Scorpio, what is the message for Scorpio? Marriage. Wow. Okay. This relationship is moving toward a sacred union. It was my fault, but I blamed you. Okay. This might be a separate message. Yeah, I feel like there's three separate messages. So for some of you, you have a relationship that is moving toward a sacred union. Others of you, there is someone that is hiding that it was like their fault or something like that, but they blamed you or what have you. And then we have past life love. Your soul remembers this intense connection. Okay. Wow. Um, under the deck, we have obsession. <laughs> you my obsession. All right. Uh, let's see. So three separate messages. So this could be your feeling, Scorpio, or someone that is around, you know, that you are dealing with romantically. They may feel like, like if you're going, you're going through a breakup or something like that, they may feel like, um, you know, oh, like they know, like the hidden truth is that it's their fault, right? Kind of thing. Okay. Or it could be the other way around. It might be you, Scorpio, that, that feels this way. Either or. Okay. What's going on for Scorpio? Tell me about this card. We're going to do your reading a little bit. Oh, okay. It's not in reverse. I'm holding the deck in reverse. Okay. The star card. So this could be, um, oh, hold on. I got to cover this. Could be an Aquarius. Or a very healing, hopeful relationship that is moving toward marriage. We have a King of Cups at the bottom of the deck. Tell me about this card. We have the Six of Cups. So the Six of Cups usually is like an on-off relationship or someone that you have uh, some history with. More of a nostalgic connection. <clears throat> You may receive some kind of apology and transformation is on the horizon. This could also be a distance relationship for some of you. Tell me about past life love. So we have the six of swords. Interesting. Okay. Um, Hang on, I, I'm, I'm getting there. Hold on. Something's wanting to come through, but it's, it's kind of not quite there yet. Hold on. Okay, I'm getting like, <clears throat> the sea is parting, the clouds are breaking. Um... Okay, you're not moving away from something. You're moving towards something. Because usually the Six of Swords is about moving away from uh, overthinking something or... Um, and in that sense, yes, I, I do believe you are. But you're actually moving toward something. Because the Six of Swords oftentimes will show up in romantic readings as kind of like a breakup connection card or, or learning a lesson, moving on, you know, that kind of thing. I feel like this is... Not uh, yes, those things may be involved in a way, but this is like you are you're being you're able to understand the overview of this situation now. It's like your soul is remembering what you need to remember, if that makes sense, <laughs> okay, and it's like reminding you of like, yeah, you've been here before, Scorpio. Um, so that could be in a positive way or in a check yourself kind of way too. Okay. 
Um, all right, so let's get your actual message. I gave you a little extra on that since it looked like we had three different situations. So let's see what your actual romantic message is. Okay, the hanged man wanting to pop out. Okay, what do we have here for Scorpio? So we have the four of cups and the moon. Okay, so in the recent past, there's either you are checking in on someone to see, hey, are they over me yet? Or they are doing that to you. Because I always notice this eye kind of peeking through the veil, right? And this masculine energy here covering up a rose. And then with the moon, the moon is about like the hidden. So I feel like there's something like where you may be like wondering, ah, you know, is, have they given up on me yet? <laughs> you know, is that romance still there? Cause it looks like this person's just about ready to like cover this up and like, mm, you know, I don't know, kind of thing. And with the moon there, there's just been a lot of like, not sure if something's over, if they still have feelings for you, do they, don't they, that kind of thing. Or again, this could be someone doing this to you, like they may be wondering this about you. So we have a king of pentacles here. And a queen of cups. Some of you, this may tie into that. What was that reading? Um, shoot. God, was that was that Leo or Cancer? I can't remember. Somebody had a reading where it, with the Queen of Cups, like toasting things, like in a sense of, well, it is what it is. It might have even been er, way earlier. Taurus or Gemini. I can't recall. Okay, hold on. Let's see. What else do we have here? Yeah, King of Wands. I feel like this is this masculine. Like they know it was sort of their fault, but they blamed you. But they're going to offer you some sort of like peace offering. Because then they're offering you the cup, you take the cup and you're like, okay, it's all good. All right. So who's this king of wands? And the sun, oh no, the lovers. Hold on, I gotta cover this up real quick. I thought it was the sun card. <laughs> it's the lovers card. So Gemini energy here. And ace of wands. Okay. So I feel like you have a new connection coming in, but it's like a new old connection coming in um with this past life love card like you're going to remember this person they they may be new to you but you're going to going to remember them from like a soul level i feel like you are um <clears throat> this, yeah I, I don't know i feel like someone here is not available, like they're married or there's just been some complications within a relationship. But you may have gotten involved anyway. I think both sides then could easily say it was my fault, but I blamed you because like the married person could could easily claim that like, oh, well, it was my fault. I knew I was married, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but it could also work the other way around too. Like if it's you, Scorpio, like you could be like, well, shit, you know, it's kind of my fault. I knew they were married, uh, but I blame them. You know, so it could work either way or even both ways. Like you guys might be mirroring that aspect of each other in some way. And there may not even be any marriages involved. It could just, somebody's possibly just not available in a, a situation. So I feel like you're sort of like, well, okay, you know, is what it is. And I feel like there's a new person coming into your energy that's an old person and by that i mean like they they're a past life love from before they very well could be a gemini i'm also getting aquarius um possibly even another scorpio or a leo okay um the ace of wands this is going to feel new it's going to feel passionate and i feel like it has like the ability to uh evolve this relationship is what i am seeing Okay, so I do feel like there is going to be a relationship evolving here very soon. Yeah, 
Now, if you're cross-watching that other reading I was talking about, and I don't remember what sign it was, where there were, like, the, these choices to make, you had, like, a whole bunch of kings, I think it was Gemini's reading, then I would stick with the Gemini reading, okay, not the Scorpio one. Okay, so I just want to make that clear. If you're watching, like if you're a Gemini, but there's a Scorpio you're interested in or something along those lines, refer to the Gemini reading. Okay, uh, I, I would say that for sure. Or if like you are a Gemini and you have a Scorpio moon or a Scorpio rising or something like that, stick with the Gemini re reading because I feel like that was accurate. Um, but for Scorpios, if you're actually a Scorpio, yeah, then I'm going to stick with what I say. I feel like there is a situation that um, some of you may be involved in an on-off thing with the Six of Cups with someone, and there are a lot of sincere feelings there. But a lot of times, though, the Six of Cups, I find, is supposed to not necessarily be romantic. It's supposed to be more friendship. And so I feel like that sort of situation is kind of what it is, but that there's a new person coming into your energy here very soon that is, if they're not here already, that's going to, going to really strike your interest here because it's a past, past life love of yours, okay? So you're like reuniting in this life. All right, let's look at your work and career cards and let's see what's going on there. Okay, and then we'll, we'll pull one spirit message for you. Okay, what is the work career message for Scorpio? Wow, I'm running out of cards here though, let's see. All right. Okay, crushing it. All right, there you go. Um, okay, that's a great card. Crushing it came out. So there's something that's that's going to, that you may be celebrating soon, or you just may really feel like you're on top of things. So keep going with that. There might be something to even celebrate or toast to also. All right, so that is really nice. Um, okay, let's get your spiritual advice card. Okay, what do we have for Scorpio, please? Okay. Divine will, let go of fear. Okay, and it's the number 12. That's interesting because when I was shuffling your cards earlier, I saw the hanged man. I think I might have even mentioned it, okay, uh, which is the number 12 in tarot. So the hanged man is about looking at things from different perspectives, and it would absolutely entail to, like, let go of fear and, like, see the whole story of something. Um, so really exercise your divine will right now. Let go of any fears that you have. Uh, let the sun shine, uh, you know, let, let, let the sun shine, let positivity shine. And, um, also this also requires a, a bit of surrender to the divine. All right. So it's not about just like crushing it and red root chakra, you know, drive yourself into the ground. No, this is about also, sure, you can have that ambition, but it's more about like surrendering to the divine will of things. Okay, letting go of fear that um, like that, that the divine won't protect you or the divine won't you know, prepare for you or, you know, what have you in any area of your life. Okay, Sagittarius, we are looking at romantic love first. We're going to get a romantic love message for you first. Then we will pull a couple career cards and we will wind everything up with a spiritual card message for you. So what do we have for Sagittarius in regards to romantic I wish I had treated you better. You and I were too young. Oh, <laughs> I want you. Hello. Protected and I want you. Okay. I wish I had treated you better. You and I were too young. You are safe and divinely guided. And I want, okay, maybe these are two separate messages because they don't really seem to flow, do they? These do and these do. So for some of you, I feel like there's a situation where, um, someone could be feeling some regret, you know, maybe this was someone from your past when you were younger. They wish they would have treated you better. Um, the relationship didn't 
ever culminate to that full maturity level. And then here, I feel like there's, um, for other Sagittarius, there may be a situation where it's like, just trust yourself. You are safe. You are divinely guided. Someone is like not confessing feelings for you because this is the hidden truth. Whereas these are the messages of love. I mix up the Oracle decks together, right? And so like, but this one's a hidden. So this one is more known and this one's more unknown. Okay, so let's see what your tarot cards say and, let, and we'll see what, what comes out of this as far as what makes sense here. Um, okay. Okay, what do they have for Sagittarius, please? What's going on in their romantic message here? Hmm. Yeah, definitely somebody's been interested in you. So they may finally communicate. It looks like they haven't been communicating before, but this it's interesting. I said finally. So that's strange. Um, yeah, I feel like someone's been interested in you for a while and they had their fingers crossed. Like they're, they're hoping that like you, that they'll communicate with you clearly or something along those lines. Yeah. It could be a Taurus. Eight of swords, seven of cups. And then the princess of discs. Okay. So I do see communication for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Yeah, because in the recent past, Four of Swords and Seven of Swords, I feel like this is someone, like, with the fingers crossed behind the back, and the swords are, like, formed in, like, a bouquet. Like a bouquet of flowers, but instead of flowers, it's it's swords, right? And they're clever. It's foxes on their jacket. But I don't get, like, clever, like, sneaky, like the Seven of Swords typically. I get that this is someone who is, like interested in you maybe they wish they would have treated you better um maybe you maybe you guys were young when you knew each other maybe they're coming back around to communicate with you and they, their fingers are crossed because it's like they're not bringing you flowers this time they're bringing you communication they have a lot of different truths to tell you that they didn't tell you before and they're and that's why the fingers are crossed. They're hoping that you will like hear their message or hear what they have to say. Yeah, it's a pretty clear clear reading on this one. Um, yeah, this could definitely be a Taurus, or it could be like that they they're married but they're getting a divorce. Also, maybe that's what they want to tell you. And I feel like this is your energy here where you're like, oh, snap, I don't know what to do with this. So you, I think this is you. So I think you will communicate back. And I feel it's positive. But I think it kind of catches you off guard. Like it feels almost a little tower-esque to me, like a tower moment in a way where it's like, oh, I don't know what to do with this. That's that's what I keep hearing in, in my head. You know, like you just, you're not sure what to do with this. So you're trying to take your emotions out of the equation right now, I feel. And you're trying to see like, does this really fit in with what I want? All right. That's that's where I see you, you sort of approaching this when this happens. I, yeah, I feel like you guys are going to get... um like somebody's going to come forward with, with some kind of apology or truth or communication. And again, it's, it's possibly about seven things with the seven of swords here. It, it, it might be like seven different things they want to tell you. At least three, I feel at least three things they want to tell you that are like pretty important to them is what I'm getting. And I do feel like you will sit with this for a minute, right? <laughs> a hot minute. Um, but ultimately I do feel like you're going to communicate back to this person in a positive way. Like I feel there's a positive result from this. Okay. 
So that's what I see. It's a very specific reading. So if it doesn't hit with you, you might try your moon rising. But again, this might not hit with you yet because it might not have happened yet. So give it a little bit of time also, I would say. Uh, okay, so let's move to your work career messages. Okay, tell me about work career Focus on one thing. Okay. Focus on one thing. Not realizing your potential. You're like a whale in a fishbowl. Yeah. All right. That's, that's a good card. Um, and th that could definitely be, especially with the seven of cups and that, that I feel too, that could be a little bit of why this makes you a little nervous because you may be making like some transitions in your life or something like that. And then, wow, here comes this, this situation which is intriguing, right? So I feel like there could be a lot of things going on for you very soon. And it makes sense because as you get closer and closer and closer to your birthday, then like sort of a lot of cups start showing up of like, what do you want to choose? Okay. And even though your birthday is a little ways off yet, but it's still creeping up to it, right? So I feel like this is going to be your most important message in your career. All right. Right now is focus on one thing. All right. What is your target? aim for your target and focus on that. Okay. Uh, let's get your spiritual guide card. What is the spiritual guide card for Sagittarius, please? Soul fragments. Balance will be restored. Wow. Okay. That's a really nice card. Balance will be restored. It's a master number as well, number 33. Yeah, I feel like you guys are... I, the word curious just keeps coming to my mind, all right? So I feel like you guys are going to be curious about some things, curious about someone, curious about an offer, an opportunity uh, romantically. Um, I don't feel like it's necessarily career-wise. Like, I feel like that... This feels something, like, different. So I feel like in love, there may, there may have been something that, yeah, that will be restored. I wish I had treated you better and then balance will be restored. Yeah, I do. I feel like there's going to be someone coming forward here and giving you more of like, they're, they're really hoping that if they give you the, these like truths that you will like accept what they have to say. So I really do feel it's someone from the past coming back around. All right. Balance will be restored. Nice. Okay. So that was Sagittarius. We are on to Capricorn. Okay. Capricorn. Capricorns. First, we are going to do a romantic love message. All right. And then we are going to pull a couple cards for work career. And then finally, we will end with one spiritual message card for you. All right. So what do we have for Capricorn, please? Capricorn in the romance department. Retreat. I literally, it's funny because it says time alone or in nature will help you recharge. But I literally like saw that as a literal thing. Like maybe there's a retreat to go to or something like that. Okay. I also saw at the bottom of the deck, I left you before you could leave me. All right. So maybe just some time alone or maybe literally going to some kind of retreat will be of benefit for you. We will be together again. So this is the hidden oracle. I, I mixed I, I mixed my cards together. These are the messages of love, and then this is the hidden truth. All right, behind things. So we will be together again. So there could be someone who's hiding that feeling, or um, or maybe you are something like that. Maybe you both are. Could be something along those lines. All right, let's get one more, please, for Capricorn. Okay, um, passion. Try something you've never done before. I'm also feeling this one. Yeah, I couldn't let you get close to me. Interesting. Okay. Um, let me put these aside and grab the tarot and let's see what's going on here. Okay, so, so far, what do we have? All right. So, yeah, it, it just take some time to yourself to like really recharge, get grounded, that sort of thing. Um, nature's always beautiful for that. <laughs> okay. There are some hidden, the hidden truth cards here are, we will be together again, and I couldn't let you get close to me. But the messages of love, 
that aren't hidden, right, are to take your time, retreat, recharge, and try something that you've never done before. <laughs> well, that's not too hard to talk, talk a Capricorn into. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. <laughs> hey, Capricorn, do you want to try? Um, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, but but I, I didn't finish what I was going to say. I was going to suggest. Yes. <laughs> Okay. All right. What do we got for Capricorn in romantic love, please? Tell me about Capricorn. The Emperor in the recent past and three of pentacles. Okay. So the Emperor is when it's like someone's not really super being vulnerable. I feel like that would probably be this message. Um, but they may be thinking about working things out. All right. Cause the three of pentacles can be about like every, everything coming, you know, getting together on the same page, you know, kind of deal, um, or working things out in some way, but the emperor's typically not super vulnerable with their feelings because they, they feel they need to stay in control and not let like their feelings get too far away from them okay but there's change on the horizon we have the butterfly showing up over the uh, peak the crest of the hill here so it's like yeah with the four of pentacles i feel like your person is like like polishing up their their pentacles all right or that's weird i just heard uh, selling their collection i don't know what that means i heard something like that also possible possibly because there's transformation on the horizon Okay, interesting. I'm not sure exactly. Yeah, three of swords. Because they're, they're not happy, all right, um, either without you or or there's been a third party or something like that where it's like, but I feel like this person is trying to, to I feel like truly like they are trying to open up. All right, that's what I'm getting. Because they're realizing this, that they couldn't let you, you know, get, get too close to them. Or vice versa. I mean, this could go either way, depending. It might be your energy, right? Um, but there's a clear disappointment here that someone's tr starting to figure out, like, needs to transform. So we have the Three of Wands. Okay, Three of Wands is a good card of now looking towards, like, the possibilities of things. Looking toward the um, positive side of things. The Magician. Wow. Yeah, definitely. And the Empress. Oh my gosh. Amazing. Okay. So yeah, I would say these are really good. Oh my God. And your card next. Um, I got to cover it up. Hang on. It's, it's the, the devil card, but that is also the card for Capricorn, right? Okay. So, um, oh my gosh. Yeah, definitely. This looks really good. So Yeah, just taking some time to yourself, Capricorn, I feel. Or maybe your person is doing that. I'm not sure. But uh, it's usually, I mean, why not both of you? You know, I mean, if it if it is them, if it is you, whatever, you know. But it, possibly both of you. Just taking some time to help you recharge. Um, if you want change in your life... Like, if you just feel like you've been stabbed in the heart one, two, three times, maybe, you know, there's there's wires wrapping up the heart, too, maybe more than three times. Um, it's like, then there's something here to... I keep getting, like, polish off and not... <laughs> Capricorn. Um, but, like, not that. Like, polish off something. I don't know what that means, but it's like, it, it, it will provide this transformation... There's something like that you've had for a while or something that, you, that that's that been covetous, but it's time to like bring, bring it out, look at it and, um, cause I, I kept getting like sell, selling a collection. I don't know what that means. So I'm going to take that as metaphor. It might be literal for, for some of some of you. Maybe your person's going to sell a collection of something in order to, like, get some money together. Or it's, like, um, or metaphorically, like, not holding on to things too tight and, and, like, letting it transform is what your person is going to. If they're a masculine, okay. I mean, if you're the masculine, this may be you. I You know, I'm not sure. Um, but chances are, you're, you know... 
you're watching about a masculine, okay? But it doesn't have to be. I think both of you are going to be in good energy in the near future because it's like, I feel like the masculine is getting in touch with their inner child. So they're seeing a lot of like potential growth from that. They're, they're starting to visualize things more. And I feel like the feminine energy is which is probably you, Capricorn, most likely, but it doesn't have to be, again, um, is, like, ready to, to, like, work with you or something like that. And then we have the Devil and the Empress, which the Devil card, again, is Capricorn. So I feel like you are really going to be appreciated with this situation. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, did, I, did, I didn't even realize that. So we started with the Emperor and we end with the Empress. My gosh. Yeah, I didn't even notice that. So yeah, this is this is definitely like a, a good pairing. Um, this is a match, you know, in tarot for sure. And yeah, I see a lot of potential for it. Yeah, see, like they're dusting off something here and they're they're going to present it to you. Cause now they see. They see that it's just a rock or just a stone or something like that. Whereas before they were coveting it. Oh boy, yeah, that's a big message. So now they're, they, they're, they're like polishing it off and they're going to present it to you. It could even be like a ring. I don't want to go too crazy here, but it could be like, oh, where was that ring that my, you know, great, great grandmother had or something like that even. Because I feel like they're looking for something, they find it and they're like, they haven't seen it for a while. Like it's been in the back of their closet or, you know, something like that. I, I just kind of keep getting that imagery. So yeah, Capricorn, this looks really good. I feel like there's a lot of potential here. For you guys okay so i'm gonna leave that there and we're gonna pull some uh, work career cards for you and then um we'll look at your spiritual message as well uh hold on let me get these cards sort sorted so i don't get those mixed up okay um i'm gonna pull from this deck because the other deck is getting a little light all right so what do we have for capricorn please in regards to um finances career also, Capricorn, do not miss my announcement that is at the beginning of this video. It's a pretty important one, so please check that out. Um, it's uh, definitely worth a listen to for a minute or two. All right, very important message, okay, especially if you've been on the channel for a while. Okay, manifesting money, reaching goals, and financial assistance and gift. Okay. Giving and receiving, sudden windfall, generosity. All right, excellent. So I do feel like you guys are, yeah, and like I said, like that polishing off and then handing something over, like a gift. I, I feel like you guys might be receiving something that like is in the back of someone's closet or you know, something like that is, is I don't, I don't know, I, that just keeps coming into mind. Um, the hand, interesting. Um, I don't know why but that it reminds me of like um jerry <laughs> the the picture of it's not because it's not a missing finger but it reminds me of jerry garcia so i don't maybe that means something maybe somebody's like um likes the grateful dead um what else um yeah i don't know something where you you guys may be receiving a hand and a gift all right but i just i feel like you like like hands-on work, you know, stuff like that. It's like, you're going to reach your goals. All right. And that makes sense. It's Capricorn, right? Of course you're Capricorn. <laughs> so it's like all that hands-on work, you're going to reach your goals. That is basically the antithesis of Capricorn in, in all kinds of ways, not just work and money, but in all kinds of ways. So, all right, I'm just going to leave that there. I feel like that's a, a clear message and let's get your spiritual message card. Okay. Oop, there it is. Ooh, hello. Kundalini rising. Ignite your passion for life. Oh my gosh. All right. So that's a pretty cool card. So like, you know, all lit up your Kundalini, your chakras, all of that. A lot of fire, passionate energy around you. And it says ignite, ignite your passion for life. So that is your message, Capricorn. Okay. Don't forget to check out that announcement. And we are on to Aquarius. Okay, Aquarius. So what we are doing, oops, hold on, if I can get the dang cards. Okay, uh, Aquarius. So uh, what we are doing is we are going to do a romantic love reading first. Hello, Twin Flame. <clears throat> and then we are going to do a couple like work career cards and then wind it all up with one spiritual message advice. 
tell me um for aquarius please vulnerability okay so you have twin flame this is a divine counterpart connection you can be completely open with this person okay i feel like this one I hope that you can forgive me one day. Hmm. <clears throat> I knew exactly what I was doing. Um, okay, let's see. Wow, second chance and regret. So yeah, somebody's definitely regretting something here. Okay, so let's see. Let's see what that is about. Um, it does say that it does re like deserve a second chance. I wish I could take back my words is here. Yeah. All right. So somebody could be feeling like remorseful about something. All right. So what do we got? You can be completely open with this person. I hope that you can forgive me one day. I knew exactly what I was doing. So this to me, all right, because these I'm using in this deck, I'm using like um, different, the hidden truth Oracle and the messages of love Oracle mixed together. And I noticed you got an equal balance of both. So the message of love is this. Okay, but the hidden things is this is going on with somebody, either you, them, both of you, something like that. All right, because these are the hidden, hidden ones. So somebody's thinking, I hope that you can forgive me. Um, I knew exactly what I was doing, or possibly you both are thinking that, you know, something like that. But the real message of love is that you can be completely open and honest about this stuff. All right, because this is a divine counterpart connection. Okay, so that is the message there. So let's see what the actual tarot cards have to say. God, I got to turn the air on. It's just too hot. Hang on. Okay, I noticed I had split the deck at the four of wands. Or no, two. Oh, it's two of cups. Yeah, definitely a divine counterpart for you. Okay. And with the eight of cups. Yeah, so there could have been some separations here going on. Something like that. Let's see. Somebody could be like kind of walking away uh, from a situation. Let's see. Tell me about Aquarius, please. What is the message for Aquarius? Is some kind of message coming in soon? Okay, so you have the Two of Swords and the Six of Wands. Possible Leo. Justice. Libra. Is something needs to come into balance between you two? Ace of Wands. Ooh, five of pentacles. Hmm. Did this person steal from you? In the past? In some way to make their life more comfortable or something? Or to, like, fill their nest or something like that? Intriguing. I feel like you gave to a situation and gave to a situation or something along those lines, but it's like, like they used it for like their own enjoyment, like, um, buying like a new jacket or I don't know. I'm getting weird stuff here. I don't know what this is about. Okay. Hold on. And then the ace of cups. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Yeah, I feel like in the current energy, like something is or needs to come into balance between you and someone else. All right. Um, 
And then with the Ace of Cups, I feel like then like both of you, like your cups can overflow with. It's, it could have been gossip or uh, what do I want to say? Like I'm getting almost like sort of like being so down and then going to someone possibly and paying them to gossip or paying them to do something. It's, it's very odd. I, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what all that is, but I am getting something like that. But the thing is, I feel like you can be completely open with this person because they are a divine counterpart with you. Um, and then it's like, then you can like have like the cup overfloweth, right? The, um, the real, the real love, like that's the key. Ace of Cups can sometimes be apologies also. Um, yeah, because like, now this could be coming to you, Aquarius. All right. So it could be like somebody just didn't see. So like maybe you didn't see that this was going on and you're going to get an apology soon or something like that. All right. Um, or the other way around, it might be you, you know, it, like there could have been something that possibly you might have done, you know, or both of you again. I, I don't know. It just feels like there's something here that definitely needs to be like mended. Because justice is definitely about like, you know, like balancing karmas. Because there was something that somebody like paid for here out of a bad energy. And it could have been very impulsive. And so, yeah, there's something to like, because the Ace of Cups is like the health of something, like coming back to life, right? It, it's it's the overflow. It's the, um, hmm, it's, you know, like, what do I want? The Holy Grail, right? So, yeah, there's something that can be mended between you guys, I feel. Or something that, like, they're going to express to you or you need to express to them or maybe both of you need to express to each other or something like that i'm getting all right it's a very specific reading uh which is very similar to who else had that um shoot i forget who it was somebody else had a very clear reading like similar to this so you'll see it if you're cross watching okay uh all right so let's get your um financial card career card what have you all right what do we have for aquarius please Yeah, don't give up until you... That That's weird. That song came into my head like a couple weeks ago when I'm reading. Don't give up until you drink from the silver cup. Don't give up until you drink from the silver cup. Yeah, hoping a life will pass on by. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, there's something to mend, I feel, for you guys. Okay. What is work and career, please? Work and career? Rising above money issues, spiritual work, and the crown, overcoming obstacles, power play, wealth. Wow. Okay. I'd say these are really good cards. All right. And we have the wings here twice. Yeah, there was something that was done in the past that it's like, I don't know. I feel like it just it was not the right move. And now it's like, as you like touch, like, this is like, like to me, like touching the, the clouds of heaven or, you know, something like that. Cause it's up in the sky. Right. As you do that, it's like, then it's it, your cup overfloweth. So yeah, I do feel like there's something really good here, um, for you career wise and that you will be overcoming a lot of obstacles in, on the career front. I feel like things are going to open up for you in a, in a positive way. All right. It's just there's some kind of underlying things here that needed to be overcome. Things you didn't see possibly in the past. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's get your spiritual message now. 
Okay, so what do we have for Aquarius, please? Um, also, this is too many. It's like half the deck. Um, don't forget to check out my special announcement that I put at the beginning of the video. Don't don't gloss over this one, especially if you've been on the channel for a while. It's a pretty important one. All right. Uh, okay, and, and yeah. <laughs> okay, what do we got for Aquarius, please? Okay, so we have Cosmic Ancestors. Voice your concerns. Interesting. Okay. Um. So speak to your your cosmic ancestors. So that doesn't mean it's necessarily like your family, like actual family or departed family or, you know, it can be possibly um, if you have a very high cosmic vibe of, of those people. Absolutely. It can be that as well. But it's like more to me, like talking to that, like cosmic, um, the cosmic beings, you know, that that can understand our language you know that kind of thing so it's not necessarily like talking to god directly right um which would have to be through feeling and only because that's the energy that is going to come across for god right um it's more like about um talking with like your Well, yeah, I, I don't know how to explain it. Like your cosmic, you just call it, call it your cosmic ancestors. Okay. So voice your concerns to your cosmic ancestors. Just address them as such. And they, they know who they are, right? So they'll sort that out for you. So, but as long as it's sincere, so you need to combine sincerity in your feeling when you do this. All right. Absolute sincerity. And also, um, it's not like about what you say, because again, language isn't so important. It's about how sincere you feel as you are asking, because trust that they are cosmic and they understand you based more on how you are energetically vibrating. So they're going to understand your feeling. They're going to understand like if there's desperation there or if there's sincerity there or if there's a pleading there, it's like they'll pick up on that. You don't have to like keep telling them, oh my God, I'm begging you. Oh, please, blah, blah. You know, it's like they'll understand that energy. They, they can sense that stuff their cosmic ancestors right so it's more about it does say voice your concerns though so it but it's more about like doing that sincerely and energetically all right then voice what you what you want to say all right and also at the same time any type of visuals that you can help them out with to understand because think about you know archetypes and things like that which is what the subconscious works with and subconscious is what's going to connect better with like your cosmic ancestors so it's a combination of kind of doing all those things i feel so it's like vibrating in the energy of what you feel and not hiding it so when i say that that doesn't mean oh you can only go to them in a high vibration that's not what i'm saying i'm saying if you're in a low vibration then be in a low vibration all right. Be sincere about the way that you're feeling. They're going to pick up on that and know what you need based on that. All right. So it's like we can't mask that. And, oh, I'm in a high vibration. I'm coming to you. You know, no, come in your true energy right now. All right. They know your, pro your they know your potential. They know you, you are, you know, that you are capable of highly vibrating. If you're not right now, then show that. All right. Voice your concerns. And. Also, any types of visuals as you are doing this, I would suggest closing your eyes, any type of visuals that you can help them to give them the whole picture. All right. And that's what I see there. Okay. Uh, all right. So that is Aquarius. Don't forget to check out my announcement, please, guys. All right. And we are on to Pisces. Okay, Pisces. First, we are going to look at your romantic message. And then we will also pull a couple cards on work, career, that sort of thing. And then we will wind this all up with one spiritual guidance message. All right. So what do we have for Pisces in romance? Okay. I can't stop thinking about you. I can't, oh, what is that? You too. I can't live, yeah, with or without you. All right, yeah, ooh, I feel you even though we are apart. Okay. And I will wait for a sign from you. Okay. I can't stop thinking about you. I feel you even though we are apart and I will wait for a sign from you. So obviously there's somebody here who's like into you. All right. Or this could be your energy. Maybe you are into them. What I noticed is you got all hidden truth cards because in this deck, I'm using a mixture of, of 
messages of love and there's the equal there's an equal amount of both and you got all hidden truth cards so that means this is not out in the open all right so someone could have these feelings for you or you are holding like these feelings for them so let's see what the tarot has to say okay Yeah, on a bed of nails, she makes me wait. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, that U2 song is really in my head. I think it's with or without you, pretty sure. <sighs> okay, so what do we have for... So we have strength. And you have the Ace of Cups in the recent past. So yeah, there could have there could be someone that you love, but that you are sort of not really engaging in right now with strength. Um, maybe like avoiding them because you do love them. If that makes sense. I don't know. Uh, okay, yeah, two of cups. Wow. Or you're wondering if they have like another love. Is that what's going on, Emperor? Oh my gosh. Yeah, there's a lot of love in this reading. Okay. And the Six of Pentacles. Okay, definitely a karmic energy here. Um, there's somebody that wants to be with you. All right. Um, hmm. I feel like it's staying hidden, though. I don't feel like they're really making taking any action. Let me see if they are taking action, or if you are. I'm, again, I'm not sure who's who. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna assume it's them. They admire you. They they may even have like a photo of you or a picture of you that they um that they look at often. Is there communication? Okay. Mm, no. Hmm. I feel like there's somebody who really thinks about you, but they like they they may be too stubborn to communicate. Um, that's what I see. All right. So I'm going to say no right now. Remember, this is just a current energy reading, so it doesn't mean forever. I feel like they're not going to communicate this. Yeah. Well, duh. Oh, um, yeah. I, I kind of forgot that card was there. <laughs> I will wait for a sign from you. Okay. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. So they're waiting for a sign from you, um, before they approach and offer love. Okay, so, but they can't stop thinking about you and they feel you even though they're apart, but they're going to wait for a sign from you. They're not going to make the move. That's what I'm seeing here. Okay, duh. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, all right. Um, could even be another Pisces. We have Leo here as well. Okay, so um, I'm going to pull like two advice cards on your reading because um, we'll give you a little bit extra on this one. Because it's, it's a little complicated. Yeah, it's a little complicated, Pisces. All right, so what is the advice then for Pisces? Okay. Creation. So this is like where you become an architect of your life. All right. It's like, it's hard to tell in this card because it's, 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 they're a little worn out. But these are blueprints that she has like created, right? Like actual physical blueprints for her life. And then she's mapping these same designs appear on the galaxy here on the sky so it's like about like physically and tangibly mapping your blueprint but then mapping it to the universe on you know on the the um a billboard of the sky or you know what had that is another word i'm looking for besides billboard but you get what i'm saying right um the vision board of the sky or something along those lines okay and then we have intuition and manifestation <clears throat> so using your intuition in order to manifest okay and commitment. Boom. Yeah, I, I do. I feel like there may be even like a moving. This is my California card, um, Milk and Honey. It's it's not, that's not what the card means in the Oracle deck. But to me personally, um, because I always think of the song by every time I see this phrase, uh, although I know she didn't coin it, but I always think of the phrase Milk and, uh, Milk and Honey to the song by um, Natalie Merchant. Um, I think it's about the River Phoenix. I think it's the River Phoenix song. But anyway, it's about California. All right. And um, 
I always like associate that with California. So there could be something about that too. But yeah, I do feel like there's like <clears throat> and needing to come up with a blueprint, map it onto the universe, follow your intuition, manifest. And I feel like a commitment is to follow. That's what I'm seeing there. All right. Pretty, pretty darn clear. Okay. Okay, Pisces, let's get to your career message now. Sorry, I accidentally hit the uh, battery ran out, so I had to start again. <clears throat> okay, what do we have for work and career messages for Pisces, please? Or money messages, whatever wants to come out for Pisces. So we have cutlery, business tools, needing more money, living well, food related. Okay, let's see. So maybe some of you are thinking about Because I am getting like, it's weird. I usually don't read the things under the career section because they're all over the place kind of thing um, on this particular deck. I like the deck for the imagery, but I, I typically avoid the career part of the reading. So food related though did step uh, like kind of jump out at me. So some of you, maybe you are skilled as some kind of like baking, cooking, chef skills, something like that, or creating. Ooh, okay. That came out too. Like creating something. There was always something that stuck with me when I watched the TV show. Uh, I think it was an HBO show called Silicon Valley, Silicon, Silicon Valley, whatever, however you say that. Um, Great show. I loved that show. I actually got a lot, <clears throat> a lot out of that show. Uh, if you, I get out, things out of shows anyway, like any, I can watch any stupid show and get like something deeper from it a lot of times. It's a good practice. I suggest it because there's a lot of stupid shows out there. Um, but this was not one of them. I, I really enjoyed this show, but there, there was, uh, there was a segment in that show where, um, they were talking about, it was just very brief and it was something I even wrote down because I thought, oh, that, that's really smart. And it was that people create things like out of passion all the time, like to sell. All right. And yeah, you, know, you can do okay with, the, you know, sometimes you do great with that. Sometimes you don't, you know, it just depends. But real, like real business people create things for the already existing infrastructure. And they, they, they create tools that will help them. You get what I'm saying? Like that's, that's where it's like, then you can really scale up in that, in that way. So for instance, coming up with a particular software program that will really benefit this particular industry or something. So for some of you, it may be something around food that you have a really great idea about that you can, um, that you could like sell to the food industry in some way. All right. I, I got that particularly. I'm sure that's not everyone's message, but if it's not your message, then I would just say that it's like getting some more tools needing, um, cause you're needing to make more money. And it's like, I feel like you can live well, but you definitely need to invest in tools in order to do that. Okay. And you have butterflies, sudden change. Ooh. Okay. temporary job. See, I'm looking at the career things, which is interesting. I usually don't look at that on, on here. I don't get frivolous spending on this one. It's weird. I went right to tr temporary job. So a sudden change, a short-term loan, a temporary job. Okay. Let's, let's start that again. All right. <laughs> Okay, Pisces, let's get to your career message now, your work and career message. I'm sorry, my um, uh, battery ran out. So I had to, I, I just cleared everything and had to start again because I was talking and the uh, camera had stopped. Okay, so what is your career message or your work message or your money message or what have you for Pisces, please? Okay, so you have, it's time to profit. Divine timing sees the moment. Okay. Uh, let's see. So something's going to run like a Swiss watch or, or, you know, what's that saying? Something like that. Um, all right. Like, like perfection. I feel like there's like perfection in your future. 
steady income, organizing, and accomplishments. Okay, some of you may be, um, because I very rarely look at the actual career messages in these cards. In fact, I've scratched out a lot of them in this deck because they, they're all over the place and they usually make no sense. All right. Um, but this one I did go to, art and design. Uh, so something like, some of you guys, you might, you might have art that can, that, that you can profit from, that people will hang in their home. Or I, the first thing though that flashed into my head when I saw art and design was interior design. Some of you may have a real talent for interior design. Or one particular element, uh, yeah, okay, one particular element or specialty niche of interior design. For instance, finding old antique frames or, but just the right ones. So it's like really having a knack for something like very niche like that. I'm getting niche, whatever the word is. Uh, okay. Intriguing. Um, all right. Let's see what your spiritual message is. If it has nothing to do with art and design or anything along those lines, then I would just say like something's going to like, uh, like run smoothly for you. All right. And it's like, you'll be able to put something into the framework then of making this a steady income or organizing something that will work for you, being able to like frame it into a business or, you know, something along those lines. All right. Uh, let's see what your spiritual message is for Pisces, please. So you have galactic healer. Beautiful. Um, okay. Move forward with an open mind. So you have the galactic healer here, or maybe you are a galactic healer. That could be the message as well. Or I feel like it's like this galactic healer energy is like, like really trying to beam this message toward you. Move forward with an open mind. All right. So be open to opportunities in all areas of your life. We're not just talking about work and career anymore. We're talking, this is your spiritual message. Okay. So move forward with an open mind. So yeah, I feel like some of you are going to be receiving messages, positive messages, positive um, information, downloads, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. All right. That's what I have for you guys. Thank you so much. Don't forget to watch the announcement. If you skipped over it, it's pretty, pretty important one. All right. Thanks guys. Bye.